Good morning, everybody. My name is Bob McGoy. I will be your your host and your presenter for this last um, DI month webcast, choosing the right video card for maximizing SOLIDWORKS performance. So welcome. As of yesterday, I just got accepted to present at SOLIDWORKS World uh, 2019 um, on actually maximizing SOLIDWORKS performance. This is the beginning of a subset of that SOLIDWORKS World presentation. We've, we've started doing some testing here in the last few weeks and last month to get us some of the results that we have today, and we're going to continually add to these results, and we'll release those in our blog, and we'll also release them on YouTube as we, as we achieve those, those goals. So first, I would like to introduce you to my two friends, Goose and Maverick. Okay, It's Friday. I've got some need for speed. And when I say I've got need for speed, I've got need for two high-end workstations that Box Technologies lent to me so I could do some of this hardware testing. So the first one here is AKA Maverick, our, 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 our wingman here. He's our workhorse. So you can see we've got an i7 generation eight running six cores. And the best thing about this thing is it is overclocked to five gigahertz. So it will haul the mail. It also comes with 32 gig of RAM at a DDR4, um, has a PCI M.2 drive in it, so extremely fast hard drive, and it has a video card in it, which actually sitting next to me, I have a box of probably about $15,000 worth of video cards that NVIDIA was also nice enough to lend to me, and we'll go through that list here in a second. So this is the first machine that I'm, I'm using for benchmarking right now. And you can see it's primarily focused on a SOLIDWORKS workhorse. Um, part of that is the fact that SOLIDWORKS doesn't really take advantage of more than four cores. The new i7s, the, the extreme processors, well, they start with six cores for the good ones. So that's, that's where we're at with this one. And the other one is the Box Apex X-Class. Um, this one is an i9 processor, so if you're not familiar with i9 processors um, compared to i7s, i7s focus on clock speed as where i9s focus on number of cores. So you can see here we've got 14 cores running at 3.1 gigahertz for each core, so that's quite a bit of cores. We're running at 16 gig of RAM, same, same RAM speed, same hard drive, and same video card. So you're probably thinking to yourself, how would this fare compared to special edition i7 overclocked to 5 gigahertz? Well, if you're just doing straight up SOLIDWORKS benchmarking, it the special edition trounces this one. But what we're going to be focusing on is rendering, nonlinear analysis, CFD, other things with this machine. So, but that's just an introduction to the hardware that I'm running today. Um, so let's let's go ahead and get into this. Um, the oh I forgot the other good stuff. My friends over at Nvidia sent me a goodie bag, and it comprised of some of these cards right here. Um, the Kepler series, the case cards up top. I already had those from previous testing that Nvidia donated to us. And um, in this box, I came across a M2000, 4000 a Pascal series, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 5,000, and a 6,000. So I've been sitting here with my with my box special edition, switching out video cards in and out and running benchmarks and going through some things. So hopefully I've got some insight for you guys, and we'll, we'll talk about a few things here. So... We've done hardware testing at CETI for quite a long time. I believe the first SOLIDWORKS World presentation we gave on performance was in 2009. So we've been doing this a long time. We partnered with NVIDIA. We've been partnered, um, partnered with Intel. We've been partnered with Box over the years. But for video card testing, these are the types of things that we look at that can perf actually affect the performance of our graphics. So the first one's a given. The video card, that's, that's definitely things. But other things that we might not think about, the driver that's running that video card, the CPU, the amount of RAM that you have, 
The assembly size, complexity, the level of detail, these are all things that we have to take in consideration when we're looking at a video card because maybe I'm not doing complex assemblies. Maybe I'm doing parts. Maybe I'm doing two or three hundred component assemblies as opposed to a 10,000 component assembly. These are all things we want to take in consideration because we want to get the most bang for our buck. We don't want to have to spend, well, like that P6000. That is a $5,000 video card. I don't really think I need to spend $5,000 for a video card to run SOLIDWORKS. So hopefully we can talk about that a little bit and help you figure out what would be the most bang for your buck. Okay. You probably see a screenshot of an Excel file. There is lots of small little bits of data in there. This is about a quarter of the data that we acquired in our previous round of hardware testing with three video cards. This time we're testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten video cards. So you can imagine the truckload of data that we are going to have to go through and parse. I haven't had a chance to do that truckload of data. It's coming. We've got some already done that I'm going to share with you today. But um, there's a lot of data coming, and you're going to you're going to be able to see that data. So bear with me one second. I don't want to cough for everybody here. So now the question is, when we have video pan rotate zoom. How do we quantify performance? You can see here, this is a model. It's spinning around. It seems to be going pretty fast. But now it's going kind of clunky. But the first rotation, it went boxy. And now I see all the level detail, but it's skipping. And now it's running smooth. What are all the different things that were done there to make me have pan, rotate, zoom the way I want? So these are all things we need to take into consideration. So what, how do you quantify that graphics performance? Is it FPS, frames per second? Is it the responsiveness of how you put your cursor on that model, middle mouse click, I mean middle mouse click on that model and rotate it, and it does it immediately? You don't have to wait three or four seconds for it to respond and then lag behind. An overall feel, the quality of the image. I have some customers that they don't care how long it takes for it to rotate. They want it to look perfect every time. So these are all things that are up to you. You definitely need to figure out what, what is performance to you, and these are things that are going to lead you to pick the best video card for yourself. So the way some of us perceive FPS, or frames per second, well, in some situations, most of us say commonly, well, 60 frames per second is a good amount. Well, when we've done hardware testing inside of SOLIDWORKS over the years, we've had some situations where you might have an assembly under three or 400 components, and it's running two, three, 400 frames per second. What does that mean to us? Okay. So then we've got computer monitors. Well, we're, we're calculating stuff inside of SOLIDWORKS for pan, rotate, and zoom with frames per second. That's the actual display being painted. But then there's the refresh rate of the monitor. It's in hertz. So if we say that the monitor is 60 hertz, it's only refreshing the image that comes up on the monitor every 1 60th of a second. Some of the higher-end monitors will do a 1 one. 120th of a second, or 1 240th of a second, or 120 hertz, or 240 hertz. Those get a little bit more expensive. You get into 4K monitors, that sort of thing. So what this means for us is when our video card is throwing 200, 300 frames per second, that's more than the refresh rate of the monitor that we have in front of us. So if the frames per second is higher than the hertz of our monitor, it's overkill. It's just frames that are going to be discarded, and we never see those. So that's something that we want to take into consideration. Are we going to spend 
a ton of money for a video card that's going to get us, oh, 800 frames per second. Well, do you have a way of displaying 800 frames per second? You probably don't. You probably have 60 or 120 hertz. So anything above that is overkill. So SOLIDWORKS, pretty versus performance. Let's, let's talk about some of this here. So I mentioned earlier level of detail. This can be found inside of SOLIDWORKS system options under performance. It's a slider bar. And sometimes it gets kind of buried behind the scenes. Now, what this means is if we drag it all the way to the left, we are going to get fewer frames per second, but it's going to be more detail. If, if we drag it to the right, it's going to be faster pan, rotate, and zooms, but the models themselves will become blockier. Less, more detail will be removed so the video card can pan, rotate, and zoom, and display that information back to you in a fast manner. Okay? So that's what level of detail slider does. Okay? Not to be confused with image quality. Okay? So give you an idea here. This was just a couple models that I had tested, and I tried upping with three different models that were similar of size. If I put it all the way to the left to turn it off, I was getting around seven or eight frames per second, which is kind of laggy. If I run it up to 20, where it starts to block small little things that you normally couldn't see, I get closer to 15. As I go across and I say make it faster and faster, I'm getting more frames per second. Now, where we start seeing a discrepancy when we can start telling when frames are being dropped is different for everybody. For me, it's around anywhere from 18 to 20 frames per second is when I can tell when frames are being dropped. For some people who have higher focusing rates in their eyes, they can tell, oh, at, at 24 frames, up to 30, I can tell when a frame's dropped. Well, it's completely up to you. Some people are fine with that. Just something to take in consideration. Now, I mentioned image quality. Now, what this does is it takes that perfect CAD model that we have inside of SOLIDWORKS and tessellates it down into something the video card can understand, display, and shade, and put it on screen. So the video card is not looking at our perfect math model. It's not looking at our toroids. It's not looking at our formable surfaces. It's not looking at our b rep model. It's looking at a triangulated representation of that b rep model and then sending that to the video card. So with that being said, that little slider bar can make or break your life. And give you an idea, I have some customers that are very much addicted to making sure their models look absolutely perfect no matter who is in the room. So that slider bar, instead of being a quarter from the left, will be all the way to high, almost in the red zone, sometimes in the red zone, because they want the models to look perfect. The misconception there is by me running that up, I'm increasing the accuracy of the model. No, I'm not. All I'm doing is making more and more triangles to add to the model. The same customer lent me his data set. I took it back to my office and I ran a macro. The macro went through every one of the part files and every one of the assembly files and took his slider bar out of the red zone and back down. The data set went from 950 megabytes to roughly 600. So I dropped a third of the file size because all that extra data was in there that was not needed. It also made the, the pan, rotate, and zooms much slower. When I took it back down to something more reasonable, I went from having seven or eight frames per second to something more around 30 to 40 frames per second, which is very acceptable. So something to take in consideration. So I apologize. I forgot to put the labels for the video cards that were on here. The blue is a 1,000-level M-series card. The orange is a 2,000-level M-series card. And the gray is a 4,000-level M-series card. So in this situation, 
by taking the image quality slider all the way into the red zone, for a baseline 1,000 level card, I was getting around 30 frames per second. Take that to the P, I mean the M2000, I was getting roughly 50. And then when I get to the, well, the 4,000 level, you can see I'm at 90 frames. Now you got to take into consideration, a 4,000 level card is pretty doggone expensive. Well, not really expensive, but we'll talk about prices here in a little bit. I just looked on Google a few minutes ago. But compared to a 2,000 level card, there's a, there's a substantial price difference. If you look, 50 frames per second versus 90. I'm only 10 hertz away from having an image every refresh rate on the monitor as opposed to having some frames getting thrown away that I won't ever use. So just some things to take in consideration. Okay. Now, one of the things that I focused on as of right now, because people are asking me about this, is the new performance pipeline in SOWERS 2019. So I took the following video cards that you see on screen, a Kepler 2200, an M2000, an M4000, a P2000, a P4000, and then threw in the behemoths, the 5000 and the 6000, to see what the differences were if I turned off the pipeline and then turned the pipeline on. So the values that you're seeing on this chart are actually the percentage increase in speed that you see. So the Kepler card, the, the, the K2200, it's about an eight-year-old video card. But on every one of the models, I saw a performance increase, which is great for all of us because there's lots of people out there that have Kepler cards that are six, seven years old. And that means if you're on 2019 and you enable this performance pipeline, which I'll show you how to do in a moment, you can potentially get 25, 30, 40% increase in pan, rotate, and zooms. What does that mean to you? Well, let's take a look at that. Here's actually my spreadsheet from some of the data I looked at today. So let's go ahead and double click here. So give you an idea, on an assembly it's about uh, 1,500 components, which is right here. I had an increase in value of, well, five frames per second. So that's, well, you can see that 25% increase in frame rate. So that's, that's going to take me from being a little choppy to something that's a lot more smooth on my eye. And I'm getting that for free. So we'll talk a little bit more about those numbers later. So you can see when we get to, say, a 4,000 level, you can see that's where we start getting some increase. So the, the black bar that you see in this graph is for a train um, assistance piece of equipment from Racing Railroad. And what you can see here is a substantial increase in speed in most of the video cards over 100%. So if you had a model that was rotating at 15 frames per second, you're now 30, 35 frames per second just by switching a toggle on. And you can see the 2000, the 4000, SOLIDWORKS spent a lot of time with NVIDIA on the 2000 and the 4000, making sure that those ran really well with SOLIDWORKS and performance. And you can see they actually outperformed the P5000 and the P6000 in some of those cases. So that's pretty pretty nice to see. Seems that the P5000 is around $1,600 and the P, I think, 6000 is around $3,500. Let's take it back a little bit. So now the other thing here is this was everything fully resolved, level of detail turned to off, so nothing was boxing down, and I was shaded with edges. So I was doing the opposite of what large assembly mode was doing. I was pushing everything to the maximum extent, and I was still getting that much more performance. So let's go to the next one here. Shaded only. 
you can see um, quite a bit of increase in performance on those. We're talking, in most scenarios, at least 20% increase in performance, and most of the time it was 80 to 100% increase in performance. So let's take a look and see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and open up SolidWorks here. You can see I've got my little Lego loader going on. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's see if I got my performance pipeline turned on. So I'm going to go to performance. And it shows me right now my, my performance pipeline is not turned on. So let's go ahead and turn that on here in a second. Another thing that you can see down here at the bottom, which I'll show you how to do this in the presentation, is how to tell SOLIDWORKS, show me how many frames I'm painting and what is my current frames per second. So if I rotate around, you can see I'm rotating somewhere around the 100 to 95 frames per second on this LEGO Mini Loader. That's pretty cool. And if you want to see how many frames per second you had over a certain time period, when you open the model, you could start a timer and then divide that the number of frames that got painted by the time you had, and that would be your frames per second on average. So just something to know about. So to turn on this performance pipeline, you have to go into performance, turn this on, hit OK, and then you have to close SOLIDWORKS because this will not happen unless you have SOLIDWORKS completely turned off. So you commit the, the option to memory. Then you have to go to the NVIDIA control panel. Now this doesn't just work on NVIDIA cards. It does work on AMD cards too. So we'll talk about that later as well. So here, to get the, the other section of the performance pipeline to work, you have to go to manage 3D settings, and it'll say I'm using the base profile. If you're using SOLIDWORKS with NVIDIA card and you're using 2008, 2017, the base profile is tailored just for a SOLIDWORKS user. That's how they set it up. So now I want to use the performance pipeline in 2019. I have to, for right now, go down to Workstation App, Dynamics Streaming, click on that, and hit Apply. Before I hit apply here, another thing that we want to take into consideration when we're in the NVIDIA control panel. Right now, it says adjust image settings with preview, and it's telling me to allow my 3D application to change the settings. Heck no. Switch that to let me pick and set this to performance. I did some testing and forgot to check this, and it was set to quality. I dropped almost 30% off my frames per second by having that up to quality. So if, you're at, if you have assemblies that are borderline on getting kind of choppy, you want to go in here and make sure that this is turned on. So go ahead and hit apply there, and set apply that setting. You know what applied when the apply button actually disappears. We're going to go back to the desktop. I'm going to fire up Solish 2019. Looks like I got rid of my icon, so I will go find it. There we go. Let this fire up. Looks like I need to go to SP0 on this machine. So, telling me my PDM vault needs to upgrade too. That's fine. I'll do that later. So now I'm going to open up that Lego mini loader. And let's see if I get any more speed increase out of this. Let it finish loading up here. I think it's still loading. So you can see this is a small file. It just doesn't quite do it for me on this one. But it's still smooth. Where this really applies is when you get to larger models, much larger models. So give you an idea, my largest model I was doing in the study was a 10,000 component assembly, and every time I turned on the performance pipeline, I had at least 120% increase in my frame rate. So this may not affect all models. It will affect larger models, definitely. Will it affect larger part models? It depends on the complexity. 
So these are all things we want to take in consideration. So. So you can see here, here's screenshots of, of getting through that. And definitely make sure that you click on that enable performance. Do we want some extra performance? Well, yeah, yes, have some. It's it's Halloween time. That's actually my my homage to Ghostbusters. If you haven't seen Ghostbusters, check it out on Netflix. So now Another question that pops up is, at what point do we hit a law of diminishing return? Okay. So from what we've seen over the years, and it still seems to be relevant, and if I look at my numbers here, my frame rates for the majority of my models are exceeding 25, 30 frames per second. Now these are, the Racine ones here are enormous models, so I can understand why those are low, but these are relatively decent size at, what was it, 5,000 components, but I'm still not going above 20, 25 frames per second. And the reason for that is SOLIDWORKS behind the scenes at a certain point when the assembly gets to a certain size will change the way that it handles frames per second. It will make sure it does everything in its power to maintain 25 to 30 frames per second. So at a certain point it falls off the cliff and you, you start seeing very, very low numbers. You see like seven, eight, nine, really low numbers. but Anything above, say, 2,000 to 4,000 frames per second, you can, I mean, components, you can see a much higher frame rate. And we've done this testing, I think we did close to four or 500 hours worth of testing to get this graph. And it was kind of interesting, the fact that once you got a certain assembly size, the video card really didn't matter much because SOLIDWORKS was saying, hey, you're only going to be able to do 24 to 30 frames per second. So something to take in consideration. Still trying to figure out from SOLIDWORKS why that is the case, but we've been getting the same results for like the last five or six years. Okay. So the question is, do you want to know how to make frames per second show up inside of SOLIDWORKS? Of course you do. Okay. So to do this, you open up the Windows registry. So we go to Windows, and you type in regedit. And that will bring up your registry editing tool. Okay. So I'm going to start out here from scratch. And we're going to go to HKEY, current user. We're going to go to software. You're going to scroll down until you find SOLIDWORKS. You might have multiple versions of SOLIDWORKS on your machine, which you can see I do. So I'm going to go to SOLIDWORKS 2019. Inside of there, you're going to find some subdirectories or subkeys. You're going to look for performance. And the key, as we see in the PowerPoint, is OpenGL print statistics. So we scroll down. It's all alphabetical. OpenGL print statistics. The default value is zero. What you're going to do is you're going to change that to 1. The next time you fire up SOLIDWORKS, it will then, at the bottom of your user interface, you will have the number of bodies, number of rebuilds, the frame, current frames per second, and the number of frames that have been painted of that object since it was open. It will even indicate to you the level of detail of the model. So these are all good things to know if you're trying to figure out is it really my video card? How many frames per second am I getting? This is a great way to help you troubleshoot it. Okay, so suggestions. These are prices for NVIDIA video cards. As you can see, these came off of Newegg as of, what was it, a quarter till one central time today. The Maxwell series cards, for some reason, aren't that, they haven't changed in price from the Pascal cards. I think they should, but they don't. They're retaining their value. And part of that has to do with the fact that the name 
in front of it is NVIDIA. So give you an idea here, you can see a P2000 is running you about 525, a P4000 is 750, and a P5000 is 1799, Ooh. and then a 6000 is 3300. Now, for pure solid performance, if, if it was me, I would go with either a P2000 or a P4000. If I was going to be doing renderings, if I was using Solar Visualize all day long and my job was to make sure that I got renderings out at the speed of light, I would be looking at a P5000 or a P6000. And the reason for that is it is a linear response curve to how fast renderings come out of these video cards. So a P1000 in my machine will take me 37 hours to render out an animation I have to do for Monday morning. That's not good. I pop the P6000 in and I will have it done in two hours and a half. So my time is very valuable, MTV2. So if you're doing renderings, go with the higher end graphics card, stack them up. You can actually do multiple video cards and it will accept both of them for rendering purposes inside of Solar Visualize. So if I were you, I would take two P5000s and slam those together. Now, with that said, we're talking about NVIDIA, but there's another player in the market. I'm, I gotta play the devil's advocate here. NVIDIA sent me a box full of video cards and I'm gonna go rogue, okay? If you're looking at the P4000 area, it's about 750 bucks, right? Check out the AMD Radeon Pro WX7100. Runs 40% less than in price. I have not tr tested it myself. I'm gonna be contacting AMD myself personally to ask for them to send me some video cards to add to my testing results so everyone can share in the wealth. But from the tests that I've seen from some of my friends up in Javelin, up in Canada, it performs just as well as the P4000 and it's 250 bucks cheaper. I would strongly look at a Radeon card. Just because it has AMD on there doesn't mean it's good. It is very good, it is very powerful. So I would definitely look into those. Um, I'm probably gonna get yelled at by somebody when I get off this webcast because I'm talking about AMD, but they have some very compelling products now. I want you to make an informed decision. Do, do some looks. Look at um, Google, look at NVIDIA P4000 versus the Radeon Pro WX7100, and you'll see benchmarks side by side. They are very comparable. In this situation, are you paying for a better video card or are you paying for a name? These are all things we need to take in consideration when we're making our hardware considerations. So, it's a lot of information. So it says here, while it's loading, can you tell us more about what to set on 3D settings on? Um, the 3D settings, I usually just leave it to the base one. I, I usually don't go in and, and modify that as much. Um, just because SOLIDWORKS has worked with NVIDIA to have the base profile work very well with SOLIDWORKS. So I don't think you ever have to change that. Um, SOLIDWORKS Visualize does not support AMD. That is correct. So um, one of the things that you can look into is NVIDIA actually has its own pro rendering engine, which is really powerful and it actually works with SOLIDWORKS data from what I've been told. Um, where did the 750 price come from? It came from Newegg. All these prices came from Newegg as of noon today. So let's see here, any other questions? For those of you who have hung out with me for all 40 of these webcasts, I wanna thank you. These things were a lot of fun. Please let our marketing team and our tech team know if you really enjoyed these because that makes a big, big decision on if we will do another DI month 40, I mean 20 days of 40 presentations next year or we'll look for a different format to get you some other information. So 
please make sure that you if you if you get um, an email from us asking for comments or suggestions please fill those out and get those over to our marketing team we'd really appreciate it and I really appreciate you guys. Um, this is my 18th year of employment in computer-aided technology, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. So I just want to thank you very much. Um, how does file size affect the video card? It's a great question. Um, file size really doesn't affect the video card. It's more the tessellation of the file itself. You can have a very complex file that has a large amount of data, but as long as it can be loaded to the video card, it's usually not that much of an issue. Um, you can usually negate a lot of that by reducing the image quality down quite a bit as well. So, well, I'd like to thank you all for attending, and thank you very much.